Hey everybody, it's Michael Skeleton here. Today I'm going to show you how to play Nautilian by Shadi Torbi. Um, it's a one to two player roll and move game. It's got five expansions in the box. I'm going to show you how to play the base game today. So with that being said, let's show you how to set up Nautilian. All right, so inside the box, we've got a great design like most of his Oniverse games. We've got the waves. We open it up, we got the rule book, and then we've got a bunch of player boards. Let's take those out and all the pieces. So to set up, we're first going to do the game board. So you'll want to take out the two discs, the Happy Isles and the Abyss. This is where you start and end the game. And then we're also going to take out the crew tokens. There are lots of little discs and you don't need all of them because it, some of them are only used in the expansions. But let me lay these out and explain them real quick. There are crew tokens numbered one through nine in this game and there's four of each for a total of 36 tokens. All right, so then we just mix them up. So you can use a bag, a cup, you can just shake them in a the box, whatever, we just need them mixed up. Put the Happy Isles down on your table, place crew tokens in a line until we've got all of them on the table. All right, so now I'm finished with the game board with the spiral, and I'm going to put the abyss down at the very last space. You can do any shape you want. You can do a straight line, you can do a circle, you can do a heart, you can do a wave. Um, so you should be able to make it fit on any table you have. Now we're gonna set up our player area. The game comes with a bunch of different boards. Specifically, there are three different submarine boards that are double-sided. And we are going to start with submarine number A for the base game. So place that submarine in front of you. We're gonna need two cards from the box. The first is the Dark Tower, and the second is the Grimoire. Just put those next to your player board. Then we're going to need four bonus tokens that look like this from the box. Just put them by your player board. Then we're going to need the player characters. This is our Natillion, and this one is the pirate ship. There's a submarine for each player board. This is the one that matches player board A. Now that we've got our submarines, you're gonna take yours, the Natillion, and place it in the Happy Isles, and you're gonna take the pirates and put it in the abyss. Actually, there's one last important thing we forgot from the box, and that's the dice. The dice in this game are not normal six-sided dice. They have two faces showing one, two faces showing two, and then one face that's a three and one face that's a four. So you're definitely more likely to roll a one or a two. All right, so now we're all set up and ready to play the game. The basic goal of the game is we want to get our Natillion all the way through the spiral that we've got going here and to the abyss. When we get to the abyss, that's the end. If we've got our player board all filled out with our crew tokens, so basically throughout the game we'll be landing on these crew tokens and placing them in our ship. If we get to the end and have all our crew filled out, we win. So there's a couple ways to lose the game. If we are in the middle of our path and the pirates get to the Happy Isles before we get to the abyss, then we lose. Plain and simple. If we get to the abyss before the pirates get to the Happy Isles, but we don't have our crew filled out, so let's say we have one through eight, but we're missing token number nine, then we also lose. All right, so a basic turn of the game is rolling the three dice, then assigning them. Okay, we've got three twos. You assign one to the Dark House, one to the Pirates, and one to yourself. Then you resolve them in that order. So first the Dark House resolves, then the Pirates resolve, they would move two, and then we resolve, we move two. And then you roll the dice again and do it again. Let's go through each phase one at a time. So first you roll the three dice. After you roll your dice, you can use special actions. You can use as many special actions as you can afford with your bonus tokens. So you start the game with four bonus tokens, you might get more later. So let's go over what each of the special actions are. The basic one is you can spend a bonus token, get rid of it, and re-roll all three dice. So it's all just random, you re-roll them, you get what you got. 
The second special action is Artificial Tide. You can spend two tokens and flip any die to whichever side you want. So if I needed a four, I could switch this two to a four. The third special action is Aquatic Translation. You can spend two tokens, get rid of them, and you can flip two spaces on the board. So when you do this action, you can flip, say, the two over here with the four over there. They don't have to be next to each other, but they can be if you want. And you're generally doing this because you know where you're going to land. You don't need that number, and you're trying to flip it with a number that you do need. So after you roll the dice and do all the special actions you can afford or want to do, then you need to assign the dice. You have to put one on yours, one on the dark house, and one on the pirates. Then you're going to resolve them, dark house first, then pirates, then the Nautilian. So the dark house is pretty simple. You're usually trying to put a one or a two on him because if he has a die value of three or four on him, you lose one of your special tokens. So at the start of the game, you start with four special tokens, and if you ever assign a three or a four to him, you automatically lose one. Now, if you don't have any special tokens because you already used them, then instead you need to lose one of your crew members on your player board. So if I had a five on here, I'd have to discard it. If you don't have any crew or any special tokens, then nothing happens, you skip this step. So after we resolve the dark house, we do the pirate. So we assigned a one to him, he's going to move one space, and the space he landed on, that crew token is discarded. So we are going to discard the four. So now we move the Nautilian, we assigned a four to it, so he's gonna move four spaces, one, two, three, four. The space he lands on, we have a choice. So our choice is we can put this on our board or we could flip it over and make it a special token, just like our uh, the four we started with that we can use for special actions. It's the same thing. So there's a couple rules for the player board. The very first token you put down can be anywhere. So if your player board's empty, you can play whichever one you want. But after you play your first crew token, all the other crew tokens must be connected. So if I play this six now, the only ones I can add next turn are the one, the five, and the seven, because they're connected by these air ducts. They're kind of hard to see. They're a red pipe in between them. If we somehow move to somewhere where we're picking up the three, then we would have to flip it down and use it as a bonus token. So now that you know more about the player board and the submarine, when you do the dark house and we have to discard one of our tokens, we would have to discard one from our player board. It's discarded, it's not turned into a bonus token. And the thing to note here is you can't discard one that splits your submarine. So if we had the six, the five, and the eight on our submarine, we can't get rid of the five because then the six and the eight aren't actually connected anymore. So you can't do something like that. We could get rid of the six or the eight, but the five would split our submarine into two halves that aren't connected. One other important case is when the pirate ship gets close to the Natillion and what exactly happens. So you have to make sure you're doing it in order. So let's say the pirate ship is moving two and we are moving one. First you move the pirate and he skips the space we're on. So he would go one, and then skip us and go to two, to the space after. Then we move our one, and we would go on to here. The same thing also happens if the pirate was assigned the one, and he moves here, and then we go two. So that doesn't count. One, two. So here's a snapshot of what it looks like later in the game. You literally roll the three dice, assign them, move one, one, and then roll them again. Assign them. Move one, two, three. One, two, three, four. And keep on going. So you're rolling, you're moving, you're rolling, you're moving. You're trying to fill up your crew board before you get to the end. And you're trying to get to the abyss before the pirates get to the happy isles. And that's how you play Natillion. Now I'm going to show you how to set up and play a two-player game. In the two-player game, you're going to add two extra bonus tokens for a total of six. 
And then each player gets a captain card. So there's one captain card with the numbers one through five, and another captain card with the numbers five through nine. Now the two player game is a co-op game, so you'll be only playing with one board, and you're both trying to fill it up and get to the abyss before the end of the game. So each player will get a captain card, and then you'll alternate turns, and on your turn when you land on a crew token, you can only add it to the submarine if the number is showing at the bottom of your card. So one player can only add the numbers 1 through 5 to the Nautilion, the other player can only add the numbers 5 through 9. If you land on a number that's not at the bottom of your card, you have to take it as a bonus token instead. So in a two-player game, you set it up the same way. You got your board, you've got the dark house, and you get um, your six bonus tokens. You roll the dice first, and then you get to decide who's going first. So do you want the one who's got five through nine, or do you want the captain who's got one through five to go first? Once you choose that, let's say we do Captain A over here, they get to assign the dice to the different places. They get to move, and then they hand the dice over to Captain B. They roll, they assign the dice, and they move. If you're gonna use bonus actions with the bonus tokens, both captains share those bonus tokens, and you can do as many actions as you want with them. In a two-player game, you also win or lose together. It's a cooperative game, so if you make it to the end and you've got your nine crew members, you win. If the pirates beat you, then you lose. Or if you make it to the end and don't have all your crew members, you also lose. The nice thing about this game is there's different easy ways to scale the difficulty. So in a two player game, you normally start with six bonus tokens. In a one player game, you start with four. If you find the game too easy, you can just start with less. So you can start with one, two, three. Also, if you find the game too hard, there's four more bonus tokens included, you could start with more. The other easy way to scale the difficulty is to use a different submarine. So we use submarine A. On the flip side, there is B. There's another B over here. And then there's three C's altogether. Um, C's are definitely harder to fill up than the A's or the B's. And you can just start with a different submarine and try that one instead. So that's how you play Nautilion. I'm going to give my general thoughts now on the game. As a one player game with just the basic game, it's actually really easy. I would say submarines uh, A and B are actually too easy. I never lost with them. All of the C submarines, I found it a lot more enjoyable to play the game when I was using them. Also the expansions, it comes with five expansions. Those make the game a lot better. And I almost always play with the expansions now. Once I started playing with them, I realized they make the game a lot more strategic and less just roll, move, see what happens. The other thing is, it, as for a roll and move game, I wasn't too excited about it at first, but there's actually a lot of decisions to be made. You need to pay attention on the board where the different numbers are because it's easy for a random board to get a bunch of numbers clumped in the beginning and you have to just be more aware while always trying to outpace the pirates. You're always trying to assign a one or a two to the pirates and to the dark house and a three or four to yourself. Sometimes you're going too fast and you need to slow down before you can fill up your crew board. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. A lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. Setup is a bit more of a pain than some of his other Oniverse games because you got to lay down every little crew member in a line and so to once you play a game a game takes about you know 15 minutes 10 or 15 minutes to set it back up uh, actually takes more time than you would think but I really enjoyed this game and I would recommend it to anyone who plays solo or likes two player co-op. All right so that's it if you like this video please give me a thumbs up or a comment and consider subscribing for future videos. Let me know in the comments what you liked, what could be improved, what your general thoughts on the game are. I like to hear what you guys think. And with that, Michael Skeleton is out. See you later.